Hey everybody, Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com at the Riverside Casino in Riverside, Iowa, talking to Tom Peterson from Cheap Trick. Tom, thanks. My pleasure. So tell us about the basses that you're uh, using on this tour. Right now you've got a Waterstone in your hands? Yeah, Waterstone 12-string bass, three E's, three A's, three D's, three G's. How about that? It's a lot of strings to hold down. Not bad. <laughs> so tell us about the, uh, the artwork on it first, the, the inlays. Oh, it's just a peacock, you know? And it's uh, crystals. I used it first. Conan O'Brien had gone to uh, NBC, and we went on his show right then. And I, so I got a peacock for him being on NBC. And then he was canceled. So a lot of good that ah. came, right? <laughs> so you have another Waterstone bass of Tom's here. Tell us about this. This is another Tom Peterson bass that is custom beaded by his daughter with a Ludwig drum finish behind it. He calls it the Ludwig bass. Cool. All right. Next up, you've got a what a custom shop P bass. Yes, another custom shop P bass. It's uh, Tom Peterson's dressing room bass. It sounds sounds incredible. Only in the dressing room he yeah, plays he, it. He hasn't busted it out live yet. He pretty much only plays 12 strings on a normal cheap trick gig. Tom and Robin share a rack right here. Correct. And on top of the rack, we've got an acoustic amp from Fishman that um, Robin uses for... Uh, Robin uses it. He splits his signal. He has a... Taylor, Taylor DI that he uses and the Fishman amp, but he didn't like the total direct sound of the amp, so he wanted some more air. So it's his idea to put a microphone on the amp, and it actually sounds really good in the ears. Okay, so what's going on inside this rack? We got some wireless units that Tom and Robin are sharing. We got switchers to switch between all Robin's electrics. We got a radial JD7 that uh, brings all Tom's amps together with his Sans amp, and uh, that's about it. It's pretty simple stuff. Okay, so now we're looking at Tom's bass rig, which is awesome, all tube glory. Tell us about it. <laughs> so we got an AD200 Orange, which is the only bass head in the rig. He likes to play bass through guitar amps usually. But uh, we had to get an 8-ohm 412 cabinet to run the AD200, and that's what's here on the left. And then we got a backup Rock River 50 for some high end, but we're using, right now we're using the 8050 for his high end on the second 412 here. And the Reeves is a backup in case we lose anything in the rig during the show. you've been associated with the 12-string basses for a long time, since the 70s. Um, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about how that came to you and, like, do you resent coming up with that now because you're stuck with it? <laughs> sort of. No, I, uh, I just had the idea in about, it was, it was earlier in the 70s, about 73, and I uh, met Paul and Joel Hamer from Philadelphia. They were visiting out there, and they said they were starting a guitar company, and I told them the idea, and then so about... Three, four years later, I've got my first one. They, I talked them into making it. Yeah. I had to buy it, but they still made it. Of course, I mean, that's Small pretty much... Company, you know, so. yeah. and that's pretty much all over live at Budokan. That's all that is, yeah. yeah. And then that just got you stuck in the right... You like had to use that from then on. That was like your sound. Well, I liked the sound of it. And uh, I, I didn't like it that those ones were short scale, but they uh, eventually, 10 years later, they made me the first long scale one, 34 inch. And how did you get involved with Waterstone? Uh, just, I, I, I met Bob Singer, who owns the company, and he just said that I, uh, he asked me if I, if he could make a prototype. He, and I, yeah, sure. You know, so, and I liked it. How close are these, how similar are these to the original Hamer ones, and what differences are there? Well, the, by that point, I hadn't been using the Hamers for a long time. I'd, I'd used a company in Japan called Kids. And they made me twelve. They made me a few twelve strings, and then Chandler Guitars out of San Francisco made me several of them. And then I got these made. What scale are these? The, the, these one. This particular one's thirty-two. Hey, everybody! Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at Riverside Casino, Riverside, Iowa, with Robin Zander from Cheap Trick. Robin, thanks so much for joining us. You got some amazing guitars here, and the first one you've got is 
really cool. Rick, tell us about it. Well, you know, Ashley, they let me plug in once in a while on stage. <laughs> These guys are collectors, and they, of course, you know, Rick has a huge collection of guitars, and Tom as well. Um, but um, I play all my guitars. I don't have that many, but I have some nice ones. This one in particular right here I've had since 1978. Um, and the stories around this guitar are flying around that I stole it from Johnny Johnny uh, Ramon, but that's not really the truth. But I like that story, so I'm going to keep it. But so what's the truth? The truth is, is I found it in a pawn shop in Tulsa, uh -huh. and it was 350 bucks, and uh, I pulled it down. The only thing missing from it was the pick guard. And so I, uh, I looked around and called Rickenbacker, and they sent me one, and I put it on there. It was completely missing one, or just didn't have a period correct one? Or? It, it was completely missing one. So I, I, I found one and I put it on there and it was a period correct one. And uh, I've had it ever since. And it's, it's my main guitar that I play all the time. And what year is it? Like 59 or something? It's a 59, yeah. It's hard to tell with these things because they're, they're rare and uh, between 58 and 59, you can't really tell uh, by the serial number. But uh, some, sometimes that's the way it is. Now, you had this one in Ottawa with the, the famous scary stage collapse last year, and it got damaged in that, right? Yeah, there was some damage. Some water damage was done to it, but I sent it to my buddy at uh, Philip Crabtree at Gibson, and he, he took care of it for me. All right, what's, what's next up there? Yeah. You got a Les Paul Jr.? This one also got, got bumped up, um, and you can't even tell that it was ruined. But uh, the neck was, was completely cracked right through here and so uh, I had him fix it too and the, the cool thing about it was uh, because it's a Les Paul uh, after he fixed it he, he while he was fixing it he took a picture step by step of the, pr uh, the procedures and um, what I did with it was uh, made a little film for him out of the pictures he sent to me and put put a Les Paul number uh, underneath the film so it's pretty cool sweet which song do you prefer that for What's that? Which songs do you prefer the Les Paul Jr. for? Uh, I like this one uh, for things like Ain't That a Shame or anything that I have to take any solos with. Uh -huh. uh, this one is more of a rhythm guitar. Yeah. It's got a nice Another jingle. Yeah, nice belly sound, uh, sort of like a Who Townsend kind of sound. Yeah. Whereas this one's, of course, a Gibson. It's, it's a little different sound. And it's hard to play this on, uh, on anything rhythmically because Rick's got a Gibson sound too, and yeah. it sort of just blends together and it ends up not poking through. Um, so this one I, I use when I have little solos that I do, you know. Okay. The next step is a pretty this unique. Here was uh, was just a standard uh, model, but I put a, a seventh string on it for the purpose of this song we do called the Flame, and it, yeah. you can see this also got banged up in the Ottawa collapse. Yeah. This is like a Chet Atkins, what are they, SSTs or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's what it is, and they're beautiful guitars, and I I love it. Um, but the flame has a has a movement in it that's that's a so it's got a sort of a twelve string sound only on one string. What was the inspiration? Like at what point did you go? I need a unison G on here. <laughs> well, it was just something I I had it another one a cheap a cheaper model and I did it to that and it would never intonate properly. So I think so I thought I better uh, up the model and so I got this thing. So and it, it works really good. So you came up with that idea when you wrote? When the flame, yeah, because I wanted to reproduce a sound somehow that we got in the studio. In the studio, it's not even a 12-string guitar. Yeah. But um, because of the keyboard that was layered over the top of the guitar, it made it sound like a 12-string, kind of. You know, some synthesized-sounding 12-string. Yeah. So that was the idea of the, the extra string on the guitar. Okay. And then uh, what's next up? This next guy here is, uh, well, these two actually were made by a company called Schechter. They're good friends of mine that I've known for a number of years. You probably know who they are. I've got one. Yeah, and uh, this model in particular I really love. Uh, as you can see, I've got another one over here. And um, I, I thought, well, this would be really good. We were in Milwaukee doing the uh, Dream Police show, which is a show that uh, Cheap Trick does, does once in a while. That's just the Dream Police album front to back. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I thought, well, why not have a Dream Police signature model? And so that's what this is. And Schechter made it for me, and it's available at guitar centers around the world. But as you Way can cool. see, it's, it's a Dream Police guitar. I gave one to uh, Joe Perry, uh, him and myself, and, uh, 
and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Those are P90 style pickups? Yes, they are. And are they standard ones that Schechter uses on other ones, or they, did you like are. select other ones to no, use? No, they're standard, and uh, you can you can purchase one of these guitars fairly cheap at uh, at guitar centers around the world, and they're they're really nice. I mean, they're you can see how beautiful it is. Yeah, I love it. And it's now, got the big speed, and you know, it's all gold gold hardware on this one. But okay, so we're here stage left, and first off, we've got Robin's amps. Tell us what we have here. We've got two. AC30s, hand wires. He, uh, one is a spare and one is used through an ISO cabinet um, behind there. And then he has a third AC30 over there that's li his live sound on stage that he feeds on. Okay. And we were looking at the back before we saw it has uh, Celestion green back 25 watts. Yes. And the, the, uh, the black AC30 over here has the blue Vox speakers in it. Yes, they're, ju they're just stock Voxes. Does he have any particular settings that he always sticks to with the AC30s? Or? Uh, yeah, he, he sticks to his settings pretty pretty good. He rolls a lot of the low end off and puts a lot of bite into it. The thing about it is these, these Vox amps only sound good when they're on 11. You know, when you you got to turn them all the way up to sound good, except for the other models have, um, have a channel volume and a master volume, so you can sort of manipulate it. But it really doesn't let the cabinet become part of the amp. You know, it's, it, the speakers need to vibrate in the cabinet and everything to get that, that really kind of compression sound. So what we did is we took one and we put it in an ISO box, which is a, you know, a box that you just stick an amp in and you close it up and you turn it all the way up. And uh, that's how we kind of came to the sound that, that I use. So you're not actually using the speakers that are in the hardwired, the hand-wired one, but you are using the ones in this other black KC30. We, we use this, the speaker in this one and we use the ISO box, which is right here, which you can see. Do you know which speaker is in the Rivera ISO cab? It's the the one that he designed for uh, those kind of Fender twin copies that, that he put together, the Rivera amps. They're those speakers. Okay. But they're run by that head, so it works right, out cool. cool. Thanks, yeah, Robin. We, we enjoy your magazine, by the way. There's, you know, there's very few really good guitar magazines, but you're one of them, I'll tell you that. Thank you so much. You hear that? Robin Zander, Cheap Trick. There you go.